Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks. Welcome to RPG with DBJ. I am your host, DBJ, and of course, all of you are the co-hosts of this channel that makes this channel such a brilliant place to be as we talk all things tabletop role-playing games, especially this being Future Friday. Of course, we're going to talk everything from modern day all the way to the far future in science fiction tabletop role-playing game uh, content. And this week we've been talking about grain and grape, talk about alcohol, um, getting a little libation, uh, getting a little, uh, getting a little lit, <laughs> uh, with, uh, drinking and how it can fit or, or why does it fit or how can we use this for our tabletop role-playing games, especially in the far future. And, uh, I, so I thought we would continue this conversation of course we talked about it in fantasy gaming for uh, world building wednesday and uh exploration thursday but i think today um i, I wanted to bring up a number of things it this is going to be a larger conversation especially about tradition and how we can use our touchstones our tra traditions in the uh, in our modern context and how so often in stories in order for our whether you're writing a book and you're it's a reader or you have role players who may not be familiar with science fiction it gives them a foundation to hold on to when you start talking about very heady ish, uh, situations and mind you again I always bring up television and movies and books and things like that graphic novels and whatnot um, because they tend to use a lot of tropes back in the day when we used to have a trope Tuesday. Uh, they use a lot of tropes in order to ground us for further conversations or activities or interactions. And one of them is alcohol. Now, so often, and I, I made a joke or, or like Wednesday or Thursday about the idea that a lot of our protagonists in some of the most high-ranking, detailed situations you would ever find themselves in tend to drink a hell of a lot. Um, some of our, some of our uh, weekly procedural television shows, everybody has, like, alcohol in the bottom drawer. They've got a carafe of alcohol sitting on a, on a desk in the corner or something. And I'm like, I don't know too many jobs that allow you to have open bottle open containers of alcohol just sitting around for your your general use but whatever uh but we see this in science fiction so often go to the captain's quarters captain is there a problem and what do they do to 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 break the ice the leader walks over or reaches into the, excuse me reaches into the drawer or whatever get, brings out two glasses pours a little bit of alcohol in either one and they start having a conversation over drinks and uh, I, I find it funny that, you know, I don't think brain surgeons and um, deep space pilots and uh, a, a ton of other, you know, military leaders need to be inebriated at any particular point <laughs> on the job. But whatever. Uh, the, the, the idea is that it is to uh, the tradition is to break the ice, to understand that we are both going to relax and I am offering you, this could be a, the drink could be a sign of peace. The drink could be a sign of, at least temporarily, we're going to talk and we're going to interact with each other uh, as equals. Or it may even be a sign of, uh, of huge respect. Like, you know what? I never liked you before, but let's sit down and have a drink because I think we both could you know, do to be on, we should both be on the same page with a particular subject or format, um, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, did, did man brings up like Sherlock Holmes always had a bottle of Vermouth, uh, whiskey, schnapps or similar. Yeah. And, um, now that's not to say that I'm, I'm being facetious. I'm being very sarcastic when I'm like, they drink a lot. Like most, I watch a bunch of procedural shows like the, uh, 
Law and Order, SVU, and um, what is there's another series of FBI series and all that kind of stuff. And they always, doctor shows, they always either go out to the local bar and they're known there every time and they're drinking there or they have an office where they have some drinks. But it's important too, right, to have some traditions. And pulling from the idea of having a drink and, and drinking out in the, in the uh in the vastness of space, we've seen plenty of times where, hey, there is a particular planet or culture, uh, alien culture, or something where there's a particularly rare alcoholic beverage, and everybody wants the alcoholic beverage. Hell, on in in Star Trek, they have the ten forward, and what do people do? They go there to have some alcoholic drinks to wind down, right? And there's um, it's almost like if you want to make a comparison, it, it is almost absolutely like the Dungeons and Dragons form of the meet in the tavern, you know, whether there's a tavern or not. It's the, hey, guys, um, we've gone to the captain's quarters and we're all going to have a conversation around drinks and boom, that becomes the social nexus or like in Star Trek. The, the, or like the cantina in Star Wars, it, it it literally is the social nexus, and it's where it's all where all the moving and shaking happens. It's where people get to talk. They, it, it's a good excuse to have people's tongues, become tongues become a little loose if they do become a little bit inebriated. It's a it's a great way to, like the cantina in Star Wars. It's a great way to. How do I say to have an open threat that's never really, um, never really cashed in? Meaning, like player characters might, may or may not want to have open hostility towards someone, or an enemy might have open hostility toward a player character, but nobody is supposed to have. Sophie, what did she find? Um, but no one is really truly supposed to have open hostility in this place, uh, open warfare, what have you, assassinations or throwing a bomb or something, because, you you know, th this is the tavern, this is the cantina, don't, don't destroy the cantina, you and so and so got personal beef with each other, that's fine, but don't, don't have open warfare inside the cantina, and you, you could very easily, hell, this has been translated into Vampire the Masquerade, where, there's a Elysium, the one place where all the vampires can get together, and everyone knows don't start trouble because the person that starts the trouble ends up making enemies of everybody around them. So there's a lot of things we can pull from from the the alcohol alcoholic consumption type of thing. Also, um, talking about the vamp, not vampire. Well, a little bit of vampire, but talking about the the, the cantina or ten forward, and a number of uh, most of our sci-fi stories have some place in them where our characters are are able to wind down. It's a great place to just say, "Hey, get, hey guys, this is your neutral territory." Like, um, I know <laughs> I'm not a very I'm not very familiar with Warhammer 40k locations and whatnot, but it may be like okay. We're running a game where it's constant warfare, but right now you're sitting around a, you know, uh, uh, an outpost somewhere on, on a, a methane planet with, you know, volcanic ash everywhere. But you're, you're up on this ridge that happens to be safe and someone decides to pull the alcohol out. And it's a great time to, like, settle down and, and talk. But also, again, with the rare alcohol from the, you know, Alpha Centauri, the certain grapes or the alien uh, Vishtani that, you know, produce particular rare blends of alcohol that have strange effects or something. It's always like a little fun aside where the player characters might need to acquire it or um, – someone has a rare bottle and it's expensive and the, the the PCs are involved in some kind of trade negotiations and this individual really won't talk unless you have access to it. Or maybe there's a criminal that's like, you, you, you want to ingratiate yourself with me and my criminal organization? Get me a bottle of that rare ale. And it's like, uh, uh, uh okay. And of course, 
but holy shit. Yeah, she just threw up. Um, it maybe, just maybe, it doesn't have to be alcohol. We talked about Dune the other week, where it could be some other kind of like a, a drug or something of that nature. There she Sophie. Oh. All right, Kitty. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I I think you can hear that behind me. Uh, yeah, she's maybe it's a hairball or something. Um, but also the I think we tend not to include too many drug interactions. I suppose uh, in our in our history, maybe like hookah or you know the idea of the uh, stereotypical like hookah or passing the pipe or something like that, um, tea ceremonies and things of that nature kind of equal into it. But there's something about alcohol that equates to, to socialization and a looseness of our inhib um, in our inhibitions to allow people to speak freely and in science fiction, adding a little bit of like, uh, adding a little bit of like alien tech or or heck even having the the human characters you know offer drinks to their alien counterparts and it being seen as something that the you know that maybe the aliens really like is um is a thing all right z hey zamar zamar says good morning dbj thank you very much good morning to you too if you're in the morning area there is one thing i would like to pull for alcohol in a futuristic setting okay Bit of brewing advice. Ooh. The water you use has heavy influence on the taste of alcohol. Ow, you have to, ice mining. So, okay. An asteroid or planet that has a near pure source of H2O. How did you put the, how did you do the super two? Pure source of H2O will be very valuable or ones that have the perfect conditions for certain ingredients. You know what? I had, hadn't thought about that. I, I absolutely agree i don't know about brewing methods but i mean th think about like i don't know i'm just gonna pull something out of my ass like maybe the rings of saturn have you know chunky ice formations that just so happen to make a really pure form of alcohol that just gives it a just the right taste and you know there might be some other individuals out there that are like that's a waste of resources. We need the H2O because we need the hydrogen for one thing to burn that off. And we need the oxygen for something else. And, you know, it, that would be pretty interesting, especially how it's, you know, when you're talking about deep space, that means someone has to expend the resources, especially in the early days of colonization to have space to form alcohol. But I guarantee you, you, when it comes to, to space colonization, no matter what hurdles someone has to jump through, someone's gonna someone's gonna be able to brew alcohol out in space. Period. That's just gonna happen. <laughs> hey, <laughs> run right play. What's up there, Kiel? Then hey, keen for the company here. <laughs> yeah, and there there's there's something to be said for that. And you know what? Um, the 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 consumption of alcohol like i was saying before is such a great tradition that it's difficult for us to even put it down and say that we would even get rid of it now i could see there being problems like uh leadership going hey guys you know i don't think you should be drinking alcohol while you're on the front lines of the battlefield although we have seen plenty of times where a commander has has um gifted their their um their subordinates with you know just a little taste of some alcohol or something as a reward or whatnot so but i wonder you could also make the case like zamar is bringing up the fact that there's certain like how pure the water is and also the various other ingredients in alcohol there's a there are um traces of other ingredients in alcohols to give it its taste so it's not just pure it's not just fermentation of the sugars with with the yeast and the, the it's there are other like i'm going to call them fruits and spices and and grains and things like that that in, in certain quantities that make certain recipes to change 
the recipe around so that you have different types of whiskey. Um, you know, everything from the, like Zamara brings up the water, um, how it's brewed, how long it's been aged, how it's contained. Like do, does someone in, in space chop down the purple trees of, of Andalus and make, you know, uh, sealed barrels because it gets a certain flavor from it or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Oh, Dead Man brings up the fact because I saw this. <laughs> I, I I brought up the fact that the that the the H two O that you put in um, Zamara's got the Super Two, and uh, and Dead Man's like likely done with the Windows uh, character map, <laughs> and then puts in like a one two three four and <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I just it, it just surprised me. That's all. I like it. Yep. Hey, uh, Zamara's like you. You will definitely have hyper co cooperation, bootleg operations deep in the <laughs> Kepler belt. Oh hell yeah, shoot! You got like you. You've got asteroid miners. Hell's yes. And listen, as listen, we're humanity. At least we're we're pretty damn hypocritical. So while we might want to crush the alcohol consumption of the deep space miners, as they, I don't know rodeo corral or you know uh, uh comets like cattle or something driving them across the universe and the corporation's getting all pissed off l l listen the ceos are are in their offices drinking the rarest of alcohols as well and also there's always the there's always that one person who gets to bring up in space when you leave a gravity well every ounce um Every gram of of material you bring up with you is heavily regulated because you can only bring up so many things. And there's always that one person that's like, "Yep, I'm going to expend my, I don't know, uh, three liters of of allowance on alcohol." And everyone's like, "Yeah, glad somebody did it, right?" And uh, and they become everyone's best friends. Is Amar says alcohol made in a metal container does taste different than wood or plastic or even ceramic. Yeah. And that that may be that may even be pretty uh important, right? Like sure, you've got the grull, you know, on the starship that's made in the in the metal containers because that's all you have. Or or the ones that are sucked out of the little plastic, the 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 uh, juice juice box patches uh, pouches or something and you just like squeeze them and, and suck them into you know it, but in space maybe that might be a thing where you know even the leadership is like okay we've got to we've really got to open a distillery <laughs> create one or something we've, we've got to get a microbrewer going because people are getting pissed off and yeah that would be that would be pretty pretty interesting dead man mentions says that most isteroids are stale water as there is very little air in space. Hmm. So would you, I wonder, would you have to expend your air allowance or could you expend your air allowance to, so that it wouldn't, I, I don't know. Like does, does water age? Like, are there such minute particulates and other things, contaminants in present day mineralized water that it gives it a certain flavor when you brew it? Or in space, would it be pure H2O? Because there's a lot of mineral. I mean, I'm not saying one is true or not. I'm saying like that would be pretty interesting for like, OK, the rarity of the materials to make the alcohol might be just as important as the taste. Uh, he, here on Earth, there are lots of things that probably taste pretty bad, but people still consume them because it's the idea of consuming the thing that is valuable and rare, and it's just because I can afford it. That's why I, you know, I drink or eat the thing, and that that might be, you know, it's a, it, it might be a sign of a rarefied um, air of. Uh, of, of like, oh yeah, that that asteroid that that we placed in orbit. I've have enough money to send people up there just to carve out just a little bit more ice for my drink, right? 
you know, or something like that. Um, just to prove to everybody that that dirty ice chunk in my drink. Yeah, I that's mine. That, that doesn't belong to anybody but me. And uh, no matter everyone else looking at it, like you do realize you're drinking dirt. You know, it's like, I don't care. This has been this has been floating around space for billions of years or something. And I'm the one that owns it, you know. Um, but also you you could have um, alien interactions that are very important around alcohol. And what I mean by that is like maybe there's an alien species that reacts violently or um, is suddenly it's it's the alien species version of alcoholism when exposed to our alcoholic beverages or the, or vice versa maybe there's aliens that are like oh no no this is just this is what we call alcohol and the human beings it's like it makes us super strong or it, it turns my eyes purple or it makes me float in the air or <laughs> makes me shape change or something i don't know it causes memory loss or or whatnot i mean there could be a number of things that that happen uh, amongst these these uh, drinks, or maybe there's a strangely universal drink in you know the city of a thousand planets where everybody gets together, and there's this one little hole in the wall where this person has this micro brew, and everybody just for some reason doesn't matter your species whether you breathe methane or you live live in the deep oceans of Europa or whatever like everybody can consume it and they absolutely uh absolutely love it but i think more importantly though are the traditions so humans human humanity may take with it hey let's have a drink let's let's just relax and have a drink as a tradition but maybe aliens in your your universe they do something different that is of the same format, like maybe the aliens get together and I don't know, breathe in the same pheromones or they, there is an insect that uh, gently, but strangely um, adheres to your body and injects you with something that is like a, um, an inebriating concoction. And <laughs> there's a little barrel of like a little bowl of these little insects and, and it only lasts for like, couple of minutes but then it, somebody reaches down and grabs another another leech like centipedal insect or something and places it on their neck again you know and 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 uh, like licking those the the hallucinogenic frogs on our world maybe it's something like that <laughs> and the player characters might be like i am not putting that in my mouth <laughs> and aliens are like oh you better are you are you freeze refusing the uh the insectoids that i've given you you know like refusing a drink or something. Uh, Dead Man says, like the this Syrian Syrian subcrustal sea would need a new air source to become fresh water. Ooh, so exposing it to fresh air might be the thing that's necessary to make it so. I wonder how long it would take, though. Like, would it be instantaneous, like the surface area of of voided water would, is it instantaneous or would it be have to age or something? And then how fresh is air on a starship after months, or, you know, even years would fresh, I don't know, I, I hmm, that would be pretty interesting as well. Like so, <laughs> the, 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 the brewer uh, I guess if that's what I, I don't know if that's the official name of person who makes beer and alcohol and uh, wines and things like that. But if the brewer is like, listen, we're going to have to let this ice mix with our air for at least seven cycles or something like that. I don't know what this, how long a cycle is, but, you know, you know, at least seven cycles to get it to the right, the right um, chemical consistency a mixture of the air and the water and whatnot. And, and, uh, you know, of course there might be people who are pretty, pretty impatient, but it's like, no, 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 you got to get this right. You got to get it perfect before we get, we, we arrive, um, you know, on the other end of the wormhole or something like that. I mean, and I wonder if you could have particular environments that have some oxygen, nitrogen content like earth, or even that isn't Earth, 
that brings with it even other flavors. Like, of course, I mean, yes, human beings can't breathe methane and the methane and the ethane on the, um, what is the surface of the moon of Titan, but maybe water exposed to it and then ha then having it distilled, having the chemicals mix and then distilled out of it might be a thing. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. And actually, you could even, I, I, I suppose you can even have some other things like little chunks of salts or whatever, um, ingredients that are added into drinks that just give it a, a specific flavor in your world. Um, heck, there may even be like every alien world is so enamored with um, uh, humanity's alcoholic beverages, but every alien brings with it its own thing, like the the flowers from the world tree or um, the granulated salts from the plains of, uh, you know, Artarius or something like e each alien may bring their own thing to the table. And that might be seen as a sign of like of true respect. Like, okay, all right. I hear you. Um, that might be a great thing. Of course you have to have yourself some, some uh, dangerous individuals, whether it's made from the, the, the harvested organs of some kind of animal that are, that is included in it. Or maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a living species that produces alcohol in, inside of itself through its stomach or glands or digestive system, or it breathes in the atmosphere to expel alcohols into the world, maybe, or a breed, a specifically bred type of maybe um, monsters or even factories that are terraforming that are spewing out alcohols out into the atmosphere to change what's going on. I, that'd be pretty interesting as well. Uh, may, maybe there's something about humanity's traditions of brewing alcohols that actually, maybe it makes it like a healing concoction of some sort, a panacea against a disease or an infestation to on another alien world. Like just, just as maybe we take the analogy of us like drinking uh, grog because there's too many contaminants in the water, maybe it actually helps us further out in the future. Like we go to another planet, and if you know what we have, if we didn't add this alcohol to to the uh, the the water source here, we'd probably be dead. You know, or maybe the alcohol is able to keep something in hibernation, keep it keep it just passive enough for us to to live in and in and amongst some, some type of dangerous alien parasite or something. Oh man. Oh man. Zamara mentioned since I am on a blood and alcohol kick right now. Uh Oh, <laughs> don't ask. Don't know. <laughs> it's all right. You are forgiven. Um, an alien species discovers goldfish and drowns them in water to gather, gather their self-produced alcohol. Ooh. Um, then each drinker, I'll get to the Discord in a minute. Then each drinker pricks their finger and drips it into the alcohol, which gives it a unique flavor depending on the mental conditions of the donor. Ooh. So if they are fearful, it see it won't mm, it won't show up in a, for me in the Discord. Yeah, and, and and if I'm it won't show up. Yeah, it just shows me a a pile of crap. <laughs> um maybe it's probably because I'm brought um live broadcasting uh, i'm streaming right now but that would now that would be very interesting where you have a let's leave this up here where you have a a drink that offers the other individuals around you an insight into your mental state like an empathic drink more more so than just drinking and getting drunk and they used to start blabbing off the mouth or getting aggressive or getting really overly friendly or something. Maybe it shows that if you uh, love, hates, fears, paranoias, um, secrets or something like that, that would be, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot like that because you could have different alien species where we're unable to, to, to understand each other's body languages. Cause we speak so much with body language. Like it's, I don't know, what, what do they say? It's like 80 to 90% of our communication. But with an alien, with multiple alien species, uh, maybe unable to tell the difference, 
maybe within the alcohol, you know, when it turns purple, it means you're, you know, it, it or something. When it turns golden yellow, or it turns a weird silvery mixture, or when it's when it's a solid ebony black mixed with red veins, it means this other thing. That that'd be interesting. And furthermore, maybe drinking your uh, the person you're sitting across the table from drinking their drink after they've deposited just a drop of blood in it. Maybe that has, uh, it could be a tradition like, Hey, I'm going to consume this and you consume mine. Maybe it gives them an insight into their brain. Maybe it's like a temporary telepathic link or something. I don't know. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, so Mars says there was a study that found that goldfish and carp and a few other types of fish can survive months. Ooh. In an oxygenless, low oxygen environment, by producing alcohol, good when stuck under the ice. Um, I wonder if you could do that as a form of a uh, canary in the in the um, in the mine kind of thing, uh, or maybe <laughs> maybe these goldfish or carp or something are placed into drinks for some reason. Like you place them, you place them into a drink of, of ice steroid water and it produces the alcohol over a period of time. You just, you, they, someone comes by and, and puts the fish into the, uh, into the drink that you have. And then you're having conversation. And over time it starts to like change the color changes a little bit. The fish starts swimming around a little bit happily or whatever. And then you start drinking their water. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, very easily an alien thing, right? The alien comes with a big jar and and, and um, has little tongs and pu puts puts these little animals into the water and, 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 you know, slides it across the countertop to you at the cantina. And, and you know, you've, you've got to have one PC going like, okay, drink. Like, oh, that tastes really good. <laughs> or, or maybe a player character has a pet. <laughs> They've got their little... Um, an alien fish that like swims through the air or something uh in zero g or whatever and like just you know feels nice and warm when they get into a a glass that turns it into some kind of like alien brandy or whatever that'd be kind of fun that'd be really fun or i don't know maybe maybe there is something that is hibernating but when alcohol is applied to the living thing it it rejuvenates it um reconstitute i don't know what you would call the the, the process uh, like like something buried in ice that's removed from it and when when heat is applied it turns you know turns alive again like captain america maybe there's a there's something in an alien species that when alcohol is applied it brings it back and maybe the aliens are like we have no idea how to brew stuff but the fact that you guys can create alcohol in mass and you drink it drink it man we love you guys and we we sure would love to bring you here to I don't know, get our, uh, maybe the aliens give birth with eggs that are required to be uh, submerged into alcohol or something, or, or vice versa. Maybe the eggs produce an alcohol because it's consuming something else for it to grow and live or, or whatnot. Maybe the, the aliens were subjugated when it was illegal for them to produce alcohols or the materials they used used to produce the alcohols don't exist anymore. The world's ravaged. The plant life doesn't exist anymore. The roots or grains or grape, like whatever they used, used on their own plants is no longer viable. But humanity, humanity has something. And <laughs> humans are like, it's a six pack of beer, dude. And they're just like, I uh, maybe nothing that, 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 uh, that roots, I don't know, on the nose, but maybe there is something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Dead Man says, or your character may find a process that allows them to to uh, maybe, what do you mean, bake alcohol out of, like, Bose-Einstein condensate formed only at absolute zero? Ooh. Ooh. That, that could be like, man, that... Because, you know, of course, like absolute zero is is literally the um, when molecular movements nearly stop. So the closer you get, the, the closer to absolute zero you get. And maybe it in and of itself, it produces a certain type of alcohol or whatever. That that would be awesome. 
Hell, you could even have, maybe there's an excuse for why people in the universe, player characters and more, have these uh, psychic Jedi-like powers or something. Because we, listen, you know, the Force is basically psi powers, right? Telekinesis, telepathic ability, precognition, ESP, astral projection, all that stuff. It's all mental powers. But maybe it is... On Earth, there's no way we could create a concoction that's possible that we can use in space, whether it's through uh, manipulation of uh, extreme heats and heat and cold, uh, absolute zero, all the way up to plasma like <laughs> levels of heat or something. Um, the materials that are gathered, the, the water, ice, you know, in, in the rings of a planet or at uh, asteroids or comets or something. Um, maybe the co combination of all of these factors is. It, it's something that we would never accidentally find on Earth, but in space, yeah, putting 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 certain things together. Now, I'm not suggesting that 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 in order to in order to use your mental powers, you gotta take a swig, you know. But maybe there, maybe it's more closely related to um, sci-fi herbalism or um, not just artificers, but uh, uh, it'll come to me. <laughs> my my brain's not working. Um, the the the. Why can I not think of the fantasy version of the people who make potions and elixirs? I don't know. And you know the um. There there may even be a connection to maybe maybe it's like a maybe it's like Doom Spice. The Alchemist. Wow, Dead Man, thank you so much. <laughs> Dead Man's like <laughs> I, I see the proverbial licking your fingers and smacking me in the back of the neck. I, I get it. <laughs> like it's Alchemist, dude. I it's Alch Yes. Um, you know, the 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 idea that spice who he who controls the spice controls the world universe because it allows one to pilot starcraft and navigate through deep space in the world of dune i wonder if there would be various alchemical elixirs that given a certain recipe allow one to navigate to certain regions of space and that that may be it's not fuel it's not um it's not the engine type Oh no, we can send a ship from here to there in an instant, but to survive the trip, to not smack into a nebula, to travel through a fourth, the fifth, sixth dimensional space wormhole, like to 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 get to sector one eight seven, what is it two one eight seven, uh, Green Lantern sector? Anyway, to get to uh, to get to that particular sector of space, you need to drink the purple concoction and it might only be it might be no more than a shot like it's a it's it's literally more like a drug than a drink but yeah it, there could even be some tradition to that and to get to different places the player characters need to acquire them that'd be kind of cool to have a have a you know a half dozen different concoctions for the players to go from a to b and in order to get there they have to um acquire them when they get there hold on to them and then it might be a used. This might prevent players from like launching nukes and then running away in your sci-fi world, maybe. Hmm. Zamara says, since temperature control is important to brewing, please teach me. Um, how about special containers placed on the outside of faster than light ships? Okay, because the conditions help yeast in a unique way. Ooh, yeah, giving exotic flavors. Uh, um, you know, giving exotic flavors, of course. Yeah, like um, when <laughs> could you imagine an intergalactic battle and everyone's like, cease fire, cease fire. And they're like, why? And then everyone's like, zoom in on that, you know, the starship. And you find out that there's like these containers on the outside of the ship and everyone's just like, don't blast that ship. <laughs> That's more important than life itself. <laughs> Because because if you bust those containers, do you know how much drink you've just wasted? And I wonder if the cold 
vastness of space combined with the heat expended from like external engines gives it its just the right temperature you know like um like a walking brewery on the surface of mercury um just ahead of the terminus when the sun starts to rise um from our own sun rising against the uh, the horizon on uh, mercury and it is a small ship is just walking ahead of the the horizon because of how deep cold in the darkness of mercury and the deep heat from the blazing sun so close to the sun and there's this one temperature range to do the thing Oh man, De uh, Dead Man brings a Warframe. The Warframe Lavos used alchemy to graft potions that he throws at enemies. I didn't know that. Warframe, I forgot about that game. Warframe and Destiny. I I I I understand people don't the the gameplay of, of those games might have been lacking. I'm not a I'm not a video gamer, so I can't make a comment on it. I just read and heard things but the visuals on those games are just top notch the concept art is top notch oh my goodness uh how very flavorful i wonder if one could have all right we've heard of the concept of poisons that are separated into two or more um Two or more compounds that by themselves are, are innocuous or can't be detected, but when combined together, they make something lethal. Like um, so someone someone pours the the purple drink for the for the CEO and there's no problem. And then somebody else drops a little bit of black fluid into their into their uh, drink during the I don't know the appetizer or something, and when they combine the two inside their body, they explode into like a into goo or something. But something else could be, maybe there are biological and or cybernetic implants and psychic powers and whatnot in your world that normally would be illegal to have, but to activate them, you have to drink certain concoctions that allow them to be used at least temporarily because they're illegal or or heavily regulated or fearful for people to have because you might lose control or something like that, right? So maybe there's like someone has an implant, maybe there's like a bacterial in, um, injection or implant or like with boosted reflexes. And if, as long as you drink the, the, you know, the red effervescent, red effervescence that's been brewed on the, the, the planet um, Shaltain or something like that, it'll boost your reflexes and you get like certain die bonuses to her, towards initiative or evading damage or something like that. And it's only, it's only when you, it, it's not everyone can't drink it and get that response. It's the person who has the thing inside them combined with the alchemical formula that generates the thing. And like, like alcohol, anything that's abused could hurt the body. And it might not just be becoming inebriated or ruining your liver, which could be a side effect, but maybe it affects other, um, your internal organs, memories, thoughts, um, brain going to the fourth dimension of space and you can't get back again, um, paralysis, blindness, deafness, all those kind of things. So maybe there are some uh, strange side effects. Or maybe it's just simple non-mechanical effects. Like, you know, if you drink this stuff too much, it turns your eyes and your fingertips a strange color. You start to smell a certain way. And there are like uh, xenomorphs out there that can smell that stuff from a mile away. <laughs> like 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 sharks smelling blood in the water. The, these creatures from the wormholes can smell it on you on you when you uh, drink it. It's like a psychic, you you end up becoming like a psychic beacon or something like that. Like the thumpers on the sand dunes of Arrakis. Uh, hmm. Zamara mentions, I wonder what kind of traditions to brewing, ooh, uplifted creatures would make. Uplifted ants milking special nectar from giant amphid cows, turning it into mead. Ooh. 
Yeah, because, well, and we've also, it wasn't myself, one of you brilliant in, individuals out there brought up the fact that that some uh, insects and animals and things in many, in some ways, when they gather like nectars and fruits and things like that out there in the wild, um, might be just themselves might be just a little bit inebriated from what they gather. So humanoid insects like flies or bees, wasps or something like when I say humanoid, like uh, uplifted, uh, humanoid sized <laughs> thrycreen, our our far future version of the thrycreen, right? Or I think they were called the Vrusks in Star Frontiers. Maybe their version of alcohol is a whole lot different than what we would think. And I, I think that'd be really cool to see that or in, in introduce that. That'd be awesome. You, like you said, uplifted ants milking special nectars, right? <laughs> and although they would – listen, as much as insects might weird some of us out, increasing their size – to the size of a, a standard humanoid average would be pretty damn strange. <laughs> um, hell, what, how cool would it be for a player character on the starship to be um, to somehow be forming like honeycomb in the back in in the uh, in the cargo hold or something like that because they're like a half a half bee half uplifted insectoid or something and to feel like home they're producing like uh honeycombs and hot and honey in the background by going to different planets and like gathering uh nectar and pollen and things like that to his his or her legs or whatnot that'd be cool jack porath says mentions uh a miraculous day to be up at ass a.m <laughs> Yeah, the ass into the morning. And uh, for DBJ Stream, digging it. Wish me luck with my first day substitute teaching. Oh, well, good luck. Um, I think it'll be less about the lesson plan and more about establishing your dominance. <laughs> so so good luck. Yeah, yeah. Samara says, good luck at teaching the young ones, all caps. You should teach them about goldfish and alcohol. That would be, uh, I don't know if the, taken out of context when they get, get home and go, mom, dad, guess what I learned about? I learned about getting wasted and fish. <laughs> I learned about nectar of life at school today. And the parents are like, what are they teaching you? <laughs> I learned how to make my own microbrewery in uh, out of uh, old socks in <laughs> in my room. Yep. Yeah. Mike Marin mentioned it says good luck. I'm sure there's no overlap between DMing and teaching unruly kids. Ouch. Slow clap on that one. Yeah. What are what are DMs? DMs are cat wranglers. <laughs> cat wranglers. Yeah, good good but by the way again Again, there, uh, uh, Jack. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> He's like, I'll throw him your way. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do. No, no, I would love to have kids. Uh, kid, kids and role playing is just a unique. That's such a unique feature. That's uh, to see to see the things that to us we go, eh, that just works. <laughs> And we look at them and they're just like, wow, this is incredible. I get to do whatever I want and be creative. Yep. A underscore says, if they're high school age, I bet they would love that. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. That's awesome. That's awesome there, dude. Yeah, good luck. Alcohol does make does also make fish very, very brave and sociable. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Hey, may maybe, may maybe those those PCs that want to ride on a on those flying alien things on some alien world. It's all about giving them a couple of drinks. <laughs> yeah. Get on the back of the bee on the bee or the wasp or something. Give them a little bit of that, uh, alcoholic nectar and you're good to go for a couple hours. They're, they're like, they're happy. They're like, yeah, sure. And, and we've seen in real life that, uh, animals have become quite inebriated over drinking alcohol and stuff horses drinking beer monkeys drinking alcohol and that kind of thing and maybe even things happening by accident maybe there's a um uh civet mountain cat 
monkey butt weasel kind of thing going on somewhere on an alien planet. Like, oh, there's a special fruit that becomes alcoholic simply, becomes an alcoholic consumable simply by virtue of its, it, its existence on this world. Like maybe there's some kind of giant berries that grow on vines and somehow yeast is de- is deposited right onto the berries and then the berry i don't know so i i don't know how you would do it but uh maybe there is a the, the right combination of natural temperatures pressures materials components create something that is naturally alcoholic that is very difficult to replicate in a laboratory of of some sort or maybe just plain old plain old uh, taxes and tariffs hey you can't go around making your own brew it's got to be taxed and there's there's like a there's the the proverbial aliens out in the in the in the bush with their own distilleries making their own concoctions because uh, the 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 rich folk won't allow them to have it, or the the Council of Seven. <laughs> I, although I use that in my fantasy uh, references, but the Council of Seven won't allow you to have um, alcohol on starships and and or the front lines of battle or something like that. But there sure there's sure is a black market for it. Zamara says I should do that with wyverns, dragons, and wyverns. A dragon wyvern that burns. Oh oh oh, a dragon wyvern like a like a breath. Weapon enabled wyvern, wyvern, uh, a dragon wyvern that burns the countryside because his rider, who used to tame him with alcohol, died of old age. Yeah, yeah, you know, that maybe that's the only like, there really no, there are no true friends of dragons. People don't tame, I'm sorry, there is no taming dragon kind like drakes and serpents and. Uh, wyverns and worms and all whatever there is no taming them i mean sorry there is no domesticating them but you can temporarily tame them so there's no domestication it's not like a dragon's going to just curl up at the bottom of the bed and go to sleep they're still beast they're still bestial and animalistic but we we know a couple of things that get them to act a certain way we know what to give them to make them aggressive we know what to give them to make them passive uh, is the proverbial carrot on the stick way out in front of the 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 uh, the, the Drake's face or something? Hmm. Hmm. Might be a good story, little storyline. Or Deadman brings up, or the octopuses that make the the octopi, the octopus that make alcohol naturally. I think both are correct. Um, when out of the water for extended periods. They aren't slithering along with no bones. They're drunk. <laughs> yeah. They're far smarter than we ever thought they were. They're, they've been, the, 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 the octopuses have been on Earth for so long, they're just like, nah, we just like to get drunk, come up on land every once in a while. We're, we're at, we actually have a whole culture and um, technology and everything, but we just stop by to get drunk down the, the, the dark reaches of the, of the planet. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, Z says, or an intelligent dragon who demands a tribute of all forms of alcohol from the townsfolk, so the townsfolk have gone to raiding nearby farms for ingredients. Why? Why are they attacking? Why are they attacking each other? Why are they? Why are the human beings raiding the orc, the orc settlements? <laughs> hey, listen, the dragon, the dragon needs their drink. Mm-mm-mm. Oh man, Jax is nothing like getting my amethyst dragon to fly me to town like a bucket of bathtub wine. <laughs> oh no, they're like, what does the dragon want? World domination? But does the dragon want to 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 open a portal to the nether dimension? The dragon's like, listen, to- toilet toilet drink is is the best for me. <laughs> Octopods. Yeah, yeah. But now, as funny as listen, as funny as it, it sounds, and we can, we can have some fun with it as well. But yeah, maybe maybe that is a thing. You know, everybody, you know, no. Listen, the 
I, what's, what's a good bad guy? The Harkonnen or the Harkonnens in Dune. I'm sure they, they love to have themselves a couple of drinks. I mean, you know, maybe those drinks are made from the sac- sacrifices of blood from their from their enemies. But I'm pretty sure they like themselves a couple of drinks as well. And to be able to, to calm their asses down to some of these, some of our big bads, to, to just at least have a conversation with them on a reasonable level, especially if we're nothing but ants to some of some dragon kind. There's some good stories, you know. There's, there could be some good stories, uh, especially if you have what is it? Star Trek has Q, a, um, an interdimensional, all omnipotent being confronts the player characters, and uh, I I don't care, you know. I have no concern for the for for the ant like lifespan you you people have and the humans are like have you tried this <laughs> drink 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 ooh i've never experienced such things you know heck alcohol's given us a lot of a lot of different things now if we can get a little somber you know again pouring a drink out for a fallen foe maybe there are uh, specific traditions of you know Breaking the champagne against the 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 uh, the brand new starship, you know, pouring a drink out for the for fallen uh, comrades in an intergalactic battle, or someone has gotten a new rank, or um, just left their clonal chamber, or something like that. And what happens? Hey, let's pour a drink for the new person, or something like that. Um, maybe there is a I don't know. There's a, a graduation because the person became a third level scion or something like that. And, and, and a drink is poured in their honor. And then, of course, when the player characters from the outside see this tradition going on with other people, they go, oh, well, I know what that means because I became a third level scion. And if they're doing the same tradition with our enemies, that means we're going to have to watch out because they have scions on their side or whatever. Or they just graduated a cadre of scions. We better be real careful. Um, um, alcohol is burned for fuel, although you wouldn't want to drink it. Because uh, what was the other day? Someone someone mentioned uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to drink wood fibers because it makes uh, methyl alcohol. And that's like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> Although I do know there are some people who have tried to drink that stuff. It's pretty, you know, you kill yourself and uh, destroy your brain cells. But maybe there are aliens that that's that's a thing that, you know, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care at all. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, have a, I, I hope you have a a. I hope you have a um, uneventful experience. <laughs> <laughs> so you survive it on your first day. Uh, Zabar says, plant and myconid creatures brewing, at, wow, brewing their fallen and wetting their feet with the brew, or that could just be how they procreate. Mmm. Plant-like creatures, plant-like uh, animals or sentience brewing their fallen makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe they... <laughs> they age their fallen in like deep caves and whatnot. Oh no. Hmm. So I wonder what the what the yeast would be in their culture versus the versus the ingredients. That's great. As a matter of fact, maybe. That's how they're fallen who have special uh, attributes, techniques, knowledges, um, capabilities are able to um, have those that racial memory continue throughout the line by producing these alcohols that permeate into their uh, fungoid flesh as time moves forward. That would be pretty. No, hmm. 
Now, of course, a player character is going to want to drink that alcohol. I don't know how much the Myconoids would prefer that to happen or, or not. Yeah, because you could absorb that alcohol, those those alcohols to their feet. Although I, I would, I could see a um, drow culture collecting it, not pre, not caring that they've had that they have to slaughter the Myconids to get it, which makes it pretty rare. And what a great way to recruit the player characters to stop them from being slaughtered by the drow. And then the, the, the player characters are then honored because maybe they lay the player characters down in these moist little, like uh, almost like laying them down in the rich soil. But it's like the soil's moist because it's got so much alcohol content into it. And the player characters have to lay, like this is a, a gift and they lay them down in it and it grants them certain temporary uh you, you know temporary abilities or something little one shot things that they get that they're able to uh, temporary things they can get and use them in their battle against the drow elves down in the, in the darker realms or something yeah ooh a fungoid octopus ooh fungal octopi octopods <laughs> anthropods fungal pods i'm liking that i'm liking that a lot as a Oh no. Player characters go into the into the deep reaches of a cave system and breathe in br breathe in extremely dangerous um fun fungi into their lungs, into their skin or something, and in order to stave it off, the alien species or even the player characters themselves have to periodically drink these these uh, uh, alcoholic concoctions that supplants or kills the fungus because if they don't, it will expand and grow inside of them or on their skin or something like that. They have to maybe even wipe themselves down or something or to apply it to their uh, flesh. Um, and it could be, it, maybe it's temporary because they have to find their actual cure for it and they can't leave the planet or the asteroid or whatever it is. They can't leave until they find a cure, but they temporarily get it off of them because if they leave... They're just gonna bring it with them. That might be it. That might be a little cool, like a one-shot story or something. Zamar says, I can see wars being fought over that. The Myconids might see it as stealing away a generation of memories of loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um the, I mean, considering they probably live or at least have a racial memory that probably last thousands, tens of thousands of years. Uh or heck, it doesn't even it doesn't matter. Just one generation and having somebody steal it away from them and use it for their own carousing pleasure, that's pretty dis disrespectful. So yeah, the Myconids might might need to have some allies or recruit someone or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Mike Marin says, I wonder if other scavenger or carrion eating cre creatures like um the Kenkas, Myconids, insectoids would so societally consume their fallen instead of say cremation as a means of honoring their dead you know what that that idea came up because i was i've been writing notes for uh cityscapes and i have a bunch of other notes that i don't think would fit into it and, uh, well whatever anyway long story short when it comes to being creative i was thinking of death rights for cultures and for someone to be able, I was going to make up, well, not make up. I do have charts about death rights for various cultures. And it made me think like there's a ton of different death rights for various cultures that do not apply in the traditional let's bury them and put them on a headstone because there's so many things like uh, cremations or I'm sorry, the idea of destruction of the body isn't only through cremation. It sometimes it's done with acid, or sometimes it's it's taking the the, the body of the fallen and placing them into areas and situations that would cause their own decomposition. I think myconids would absolutely positively, and like you said, insectoids and things. Um, would place their fallen into a place where they would decompose and be readily available for their bodies to be used 
more commonly than we would think as human beings. It would be it would be the equivalent of us burying our dead under the fields where we grow our food. Like we we kind of don't do that, but I would I could see a lot of cultures doing that. Like, oh, this this is our loved ones. We of course we plant them out there in the foods we eat. And you know, humans like <laughs> you know, but I I could see I mean dw- fantasy dwarven cultures that that would kind of make sense, right? That I mean, uh, uh, if you're unless your dwarves turn to stone when they die, um yeah, why would insect I I would think there would be nothing of it. Ants we, we know there are ant and uh insectoid creatures like ants that take their fallen and bury them in their own um hives, but yeah, maybe there's something inside of them that chemically inside of their fallen that um, transfers information, memories, um, skills and capabilities, you know, um, hunting techniques, um, poisons, greater strengths, I don't know, pheromones, um, uh, the ability to send out signals that deafen, hypnotize, uh, confuse, confound, uh, uh, maybe it makes their skin camouflage, making them blend into the to the blend into the surroundings of which they live and all these things are only possible because they take it from their fallen. So I, I think that's a great idea. Matter of fact, what a great concept for the player characters to help their allies, alien like allies, whether they're like plant like or insectoid to gather their fallen and the player characters are there to help them bring their fallen back for the purpose of burying them so that they decompose maybe in acid pits or something of that nature. Or maybe there's just a breed of, there's a breed of a specific cast of a plant or insectoid or oozoid, you know, plasmoid being whose only job is to break down the materials of their fallen to be used as compounds for the living. Um, and, and they're just there to consume them and, and excrete them or something. I think it's a great idea. And I, I think that really, I think that that would make a really good twist on a character type, right? Like um, a, a, a player character is very insectoid and they drink a concoction and it gives them certain abilities. And a player character is like, oh, can I drink that and get that? And then, yeah, sure, it's my uncle, but yeah. <laughs> He was a great warrior, and it, and it fuels me, so I love it. Zamara says, insectoid creatures making alcohol containers out of their honored dead. Like you said, brewing things even has a different taste inside of metallic and ceramic and wooden and plastic containers um, as well. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, those are held for generations. The yeast inside inebriating their great-great-grandchildren. <laughs> Yeah, the the the, the chitinous, the chitinous shells being used as containers for to to make the alcohol, or as as their internal organs break down, it, it makes the yeast to produce that kind of stuff. I, I I like it. I like it a lot. Oh man, Mike Marin says it's not far removed uh, from planting a tree beside someone's ha- a headstone. That's true. Uh, crops are seen as. Di- Crops are seen as disrespectful, but trees seem respectful. Yeah, and that, listen, that's a very cultural thing. But I mean, I've even I think there's even you can look up even in our modern context, there are people who have death rights where they have their loved ones buried, literally buried out in the wild, and a tree planted over top of them. And the tree represents, you know, the continued growth and whatnot. Um, I, I think there's a funeral services that allow you to do that kind of thing. And that's a real thing. There, at one point, there was a, a gentleman that was a serial killer that was killing here in the U.S. and was killing people and taking their bodies and putting them in the hollows of trees because he, because he had a, a strange respect for the trees and the natural environment. I don't remember the person's name. He was um, he was hauling their bodies and putting them in the hollows of trees. Um, it's a very strange individual. Um, Dead man says a giant fungal octopus that oversees a herd of myconids, like how ants will tend a bunch of 
amphids to milk them for sweet food stuff. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Because maybe the player to the player characters, they don't even realize how huge this fung fungal octopus is because maybe they <laughs> the player characters walk over the um the fibrous tendrils not knowing that there's that the oct the fungal octopus is actually in control because they're just like, oh, I'm just gonna climb over the fungoid um the membranes that extend hundreds of feet along the different pathways in the in the caverns and whatnot. And and they've been crossing back and forth over top of them for like hours, days, <laughs> uh, communicating and or battling the myconids. And then one day the, the 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 fibers like animate and they're like, what are you doing? The PCs are like, who's in my head? What the hell's going on? Why why are there pheromones being sprayed? I don't have control of my own mind. Ah. <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of antagonistical monsters that probably, given a different context, would probably produce their own pretty good alcohols. I mean, there's a lot of oozes in Dungeons and Dragons that like mixed proper concoction, and they probably produce some pretty damn powerful alcohols. Um, little get a, someone drops a little cube cube of uh, gelatinous into your glass. <laughs> Um, or uh, there's a dun a number of plants like screechers, uh, is an old classic. Um, there's a purple fungoid plant like monster that's more uh, less mobile but produces like hallucinogenics, uh, hallucinogenic uh, pollen or spores or something that might people might want to produce that into alcohols. Like they may maybe. This fungal octopus, um, not consciously, is farming slash herding the myconid styled various breeds, and it just so happens that they're producing the materials that make really great alcohols, which would make a pr really good I idea of why the myconoids are being a assaulted in the first place is just because it makes great alcohol. Uh, the fact that they're alive is a side effect. It's like, well, we're going to have to kill them, but sure would like to take their mushrooms <laughs> and, and, uh, and put them in my drink. Oh man. Zamara says, uh, in one of my, one of my DMS game world, goblins season their food with negative emotions. Ooh. Once again, using blood, maybe they milk the blood as a form of intoxicants of those with great fears. The deeper the fear, the stronger the intoxicant. Ow, we went dark with that one. I love it. I love it so much. You know? Yeah, down in the lower planes, I could see, I could see alcohol being created by you know the up the the the, the bodies of uh, of the tortured hanging upside down one one drop of blood you know every moment going into these um in, into the brewing of these strange alcohols as fears and insanity shred the brains of the people that are being that are have uh, their souls taken down to hell and stuff like that yeah yeah i'm liking it um <laughs> hey don't don't let it be said that um don't don't let it be said that the to to survive the the onslaught of of uh, Lovecraftian monsters you might have to have a couple of a couple of dozen drinks inside of you just to survive the insanity. It's like oh I get oh I'd rather take the disadvantages of being drunk than have the disadvantages of looking of of looking uh, the abyss in the face and having it look back at me. You know, but anyway, guys, I've gone on too long. Got to head off to work. A ton of hours. Oh my God. Um, I I so appreciate all of you for being here with your your <laughs> your brilliance. Um, Keel on the other side of the world stopping by for a little bit. Um, Jack having to go off to to uh to be a substitute teacher. Oof, far worse than anything I got to do. But I really appreciate it, guys. Have a great one. Um, uh, for those who are brand new to the channel, who see this later or whatever, uh. You know, CTA, man, call to action, uh, like, share, subscribe, um, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, please, maybe, uh, maybe it's the kind of thing that people might find later on. Mufa, hey, what's going on? Hanging out in the background. So his goblins are basically Cartman. 
Oh, the tears of unfathomable sadness. <laughs> lick, lick, lick. <laughs> yeah. Damn. They melt Kenny. <laughs> oh, man. So I was like, have a nice day. Hopefully it's a slow and relaxing one. Yeah, sorry that it won't be. Yep, poor, poor one for your fellow DM and workers. Hells yes. Guys, have a great one out um, today. A uh, little cold here in the middle of a, in, in the Ohio Valley. Uh, th those of us that are above a certain parallel, it's a little cold temperatures right now. But um, but pretty interesting. Guys, you have a great one out there yourselves. Going on a little bit long here, what, an hour, 15 minutes or something. Um, but have a great day. I will see thee later. Please. Peace. Love.